Good evening. It's May the 13th, 2020, and we're still quarantined with COVID-19, but good news. Uh, we are going to be opening up this coming Sunday morning on the Lord's Day, and we're looking forward to being back at the Randolph Church of Christ meeting house at the church building, and we hope making your plans to be with us on Sunday. We'll have Bible study at 9 a.m. and worship at 10 a.m., and uh, Brother Bill Miller will be teaching our class, and uh, we will have uh, our regular worship service, and we are going to be practicing social distancing. And instead of the right hand of fellowship, we probably have to have the 2020 version of the chicken wing where you bump elbows. <laughs> That's what I've heard it called. But uh, we will find a good way to do uh, the the social distancing and practice um, those sorts of things. But we are going to um, encourage everyone to practice safety first. And uh, we are prayerful that this will be a good thing that we can open back up and be together once again. Let's pray together before we study our Bible. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful that we can be together this evening and study thy word. We ask your blessings on us as we open thy word to study we pray that you will bless our hearts and our minds with openness and that we can drink deeply at the fountains of your word and find the truth that can set us free. Father, we pray that you would open our eyes that we might see wondrous things from thy law. We're thankful, Father, that during a time of quarantine that we could still be together through the means of modern technology uh, we think about, in time past, reading in history about other pandemics where people had to have a social distance and they did not have what we have been able to enjoy because of technology. And we're thankful, Father, for these modern blessings. Father, we're looking forward to being back with our brethren, but we pray that you will keep us safe and we pray that you'll keep especially those who are vulnerable the older population, and we pray, Father, for those who are compromised in their health, that the COVID um, virus will not invade their immune system. And Father, we pray that the numbers can go down of new infections and that health can return. And we pray that our society and our world may find a way to combat this virus. And we pray, Father, that there will not be an, an, a second round and if there is, we pray, Father, you'll help us to learn from what we've gone through since this broke out. Father, we know that you know all things and you do all things well, and we put our trust in you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We're glad that you're with us. Uh, again, this will be our last Wednesday night that we'll be coming um, via Facebook Live. I'm, I've got two confessions to make. And I'm going to make the first confession here in the beginning of this lesson. And the last confession will come at the very end. So you'll have to wait for it. The first confession is, I'm very tired. Uh, someone asked me today, they said, uh, have you been um, been able to stay busy during the quarantine? And, and I had to confess, I've been busier. Uh, the nature of my secular job is... Uh, they, can, they call it essential, so we've had um, overtime, and then I guess there's been overtime in teaching classes via the Facebook. I'm not complaining. I've enjoyed every minute of it, but I am tired, and I told Brother Bill Miller that I'm looking forward to being back in his class, and, and uh, he, he does such a wonderful thing in sharing the load with me, and I appreciate all the efforts he makes in Bible study and, and guiding uh, in both his example and in his teaching. And we're looking forward to being back together and hope you'll make your plans to be with us at Randolph Church of Christ on Randolph Avenue in downtown Huntsville. And we will meet Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Bible class, 10 a.m. for worship, and again at 5 p.m. for another Bible study and more worship. And then on Wednesday evenings, we will meet at 6 o'clock at the building and of course, we'll be practicing our social distancing and um, we will 
be following all the guidelines that are handed down to us as best we can and I'm praying that God will protect us and uh, we, we feel uh, very good that this is a good time that since we're allowed by those that are in authority that are watching over uh, our society they think it's a good time to start opening up and others are doing this and so we're going to follow suit in this too. So the first confession I make is I'm tired and looking forward to some sharing the responsibility and we thank you for tuning in with us. This has been different. I use no makeup and it's very obvious. Those that are on television, they have makeup artists and uh, people that help them um, you know, get ready for this sort of thing and they've got training in it. Well, this is me sitting before uh, my beautiful wife, which is very good help, but uh, I'm looking at a little dot on the back of a cell phone. And so it's, it's different doing it this way and I, I miss everyone. Some things I've learned from this is the two things that, well, three things that I didn't really think enough about. Number one, um, and this is not in particular ranking, but I miss the singing with my brethren. It's just, you sing at home and you sing with your family, that's wonderful, but to sing with the saints gathered in worship, it's a joy. And when you don't have that, you miss it. And of course, there's the fellowship. We miss that, of course, and that comes with uh, meeting together. Other things that we miss, though, is, and I didn't think about this, but we're to lay by our, uh, in stores. We've been prospered uh, every week. And uh, that's the what's taught in the New Testament. And uh, when you don't do that, um, uh, and take up the, the collection, uh, then it starts to, to um, well, you, you see the wisdom in laying it aside as you've been prospered. Now, not everyone has been prospering through this COVID-19. Some have been laid off, some have lost jobs, and the Lord understands that. He does not expect us to do beyond what we're able, but uh, he does expect us to do what we are able and to bear our responsibilities and it's a privilege to give. God loves a cheerful giver. And I mentioned that with um, just, just saying that it, it, that's something that I didn't realize I would miss in being able to participate in that. And, and then being able to commune with the brethren in the Lord's Supper all together, that's just going to take on more meaning and praying together. All the things we do together in worship, we do this to God. We worship God, but we benefit by being participants together. And we could say more about that, but I want to spend the balance of our time uh, studying God's Word uh, this evening, and then I'll make my last confession, and it, it's not going to be a bombshell, but you'll like it, I think. Psalm 119, verse 18. The psalmist said, Open thou mine eyes, that I might see wondrous things from thy law. Why would he want God to open his eyes? Well, he was afraid that he would not miss he, that he would miss things that are wondrous to behold. And that is a, a good prayer. Often we can read through scripture and we, we may just read and miss what's there. But if we couple our Bible study with prayer, we're asking the God who wrote and revealed the scripture to help us, to concentrate, to help us, to be at our best, and to, to have an open heart so that we might receive, as James says, the implanted word which is able to save the soul. And so as we pray for God to open our eyes to see wondrous things from his law, we can see wondrous things in both the Old and New Testament. I didn't have a lot of time today, but I jotted things down as I was just thinking about some wonderful things. Now, we can't, don't have time to go through all of this, but these are just thoughts that came to mind, and there's so many more that could come to mind. But I want to share with you some verses that I think are wondrous to behold. The first one is in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 24. 
Deuteronomy 6, verse 24, And the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God. Now, we often read verses that say something similar to that. God has commanded us to observe his statutes and to fear the Lord our God. But the question may be, why? Well, this verse answers it. I'll read it without comment because it answers why we should observe God's commandments. And the Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. That's why God has given so many commandments, why our Bible is so thick. Someone says it takes a long time to read the scriptures, and it does. But that's a blessing. What if God had only given us one sentence? Well, that would have been enough if he had decided that that's all we needed. But I'm thankful that we've got all of this. We're curious about a lot of things. There's a lot of things I'm curious about the Bible doesn't even talk about. God doesn't really want us to know those things that he's not revealed. But the things he has revealed are for us. And the commandments that we might not understand... If we just comply with God's will, we can remember this. They're for our good always. My mother used to tell me to go into my room and make my bed or to wash behind my ears or to pick up my socks or do something like that. And I think, why? Well, number one, because she said do it. But number two, she was trying to teach me something. And... It's for our children's good that we teach them the things that they might not find pleasant, but it's for their good. And God understands us completely. Now, I'd like to turn to the New Testament. Well, one more verse in the Old Testament. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7. This is the verse where Samuel was going to meet the one that God had chosen to be king of Israel, one of Jesse's sons. When he saw the oldest son, he saw his height, his stature, and he thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed, the one that will be king of Israel. But it was wrong because he was only looking at outward appearance. Notice 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That's an important verse because as creatures, we have five senses. And we tend to use these senses in relating to our outside world. And we look at one another and we say, see outward appearances. As you see me, you're not looking at someone that you normally would see on television they have the lighting, they have the expensive cameras, they have the script, they have the makeup, and they have the looks and all that goes with it, the training. Well, you're not getting that right now. And uh, don't judge me up against someone that would be on television all the time. Um, they are professional, I'm amateur. What I'm trying to do, though, is preach. And I'm asking you not to judge in a comparative way. Well, that is an important thing for us all the time. We're not to judge outwardly. That's how we see things, though. We, we cannot see the heart of one another. It is the words and the actions of man that does reveal the heart, and we go on that. We do observe one another's words and behavior, and we can make judgments by being fruit inspectors, but we cannot judge motives. We cannot, and we should not judge prejudicially, with prejudice. God can see in a way that man cannot see. Man can look at the outward appearance, and that's what we have to go on lots of times. But God sees directly.